Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me. Now today I want to talk about one of the most tricky and confounding decisions in backgammon. When to run off the 20 point anchor. When to break the golden point. When to just go for it. Now what should we be thinking about in these positions? Now in this short video I hope to give you some guidance and some clarity on some of the thinking you should adopt and hopefully after 10 minutes you will have a kind of visual map so when faced with these positions over the board you know which direction to take to make the best play so let us get started now in this first position there really are only two things white can do he can break the anchor 22 22 11 or he can move some checkers in his front position so the question is do you break the anchor here or not? Now I can tell you that if you chose to break the anchor, that would indeed be a blunder, even though you are eight pips up in the race. Breaking the anchor would be a big mistake. Now there we can see the position on the right hand side. Now I've compared that with the position on the left. Now on the left, breaking the anchor is a must and anything besides that would be a blunder. So this is an interesting comparison. And what has changed is our opponent's front position. Now before any move is played in backgammon, you should be scanning the four quadrants of the board to help guide you towards making the best play. And here, breaking the anchor on the left hand side is correct by a large margin because we are exploiting our home board, our opponent's home board weaknesses, the vulnerabilities in his front position. Of course, we have a race lead there of seven pips, but also on the left, we have a race lead, which is actually slightly better. But there, our opponent has a strong three point board and we need to respect the strength of the home board on the right hand side whereas on the left we see the two blots and we simply take advantage and make the running play now so certainly the first thing to think about when running off the anchor is how strong is our opponent's front position now here we can see another comparison what i like to call the one blot the two blot dilemma now here on the left we can see the position we just looked at where it is correct to run off the anchor but on the right where green now only has one blotting board it's a blunder to run off the anchor. Now we can overestimate the weaknesses in our opponent having only one blot in board. Now the reason why it is a blunder on the right hand side is because green has good pick and pass numbers such as 2-1, 3-2, 3-3 and 1-1, one, one. so six rolls. So by breaking the anchor on the right hand side, Green can hit us and then cover his blot in his board to have a four point board. Now on the left, rolls like 2-1 and 3-2 simply do not work as well and that's why the running play is, is better. So be mindful of the differences between two blots in board and one blot in board because of a pick and pass variations. Now another thing to consider is timing. Now here I have adjusted the position so green has the same front position with one blot in board. Now we can see on the left that it's a borderline but on the right hand side it would be a blunder and that's because on the right hand side we have better timing as white because we have a spare checker on the seven and the eight point whereas on the left we only have a spare checker on the eight point so on the right hand side we have slightly better timing to stay on the anchor and just see what happens maybe we will roll small numbers maybe green will roll something awkwardly and the game could change um, in the next few moves so here Timing is a crucial concept in deciding when to run off the anchor. Now here we can see the position we looked at with one blot in board on the left hand side and here it is a borderline decision but on the right hand side even though we only have one blot like the left on our aid point it simply 
better there to just play forward and make the two point. And that's because green has the four point board made. So here, as I said before, we're taking advantages of the blot in our opponent's home board. But also we need to kind of think what's going to happen. Now, the left position may very well become the right position. So on the left, we run because after not running, green then has a stronger front position, as we can see on the right. So timing is important, but also taking advantage, as mentioned, of your opponent's front position. Do you go now or do you wait? Timing is important, but also the front position. Now here we see a difference in white's board strength between having a four point board and having a five point board. And we've also given green a four point home board. And now on the left, it's a blunder to run, but on the right, it is correct. And here we can kind of see um, the differences because we have a slight kind of pip advantage. So here, having a three pip lead on the left and having a seven pip lead on the right is important, but also so is having the five point board because on the right hand side, if green does hit us loose, then we can hit him back and contain him much better. Green would only have 11 entry numbers on a five point board, whereas on the left with a four point board, he would have 20 entry numbers. And of course, after playing 6-3 on the right hand side, we'd now be 16 pips up in the race. And depending on what green rolled in return, we may very well be in the doubling window. So certainly always thinking about future cube actions are important in deciding how to move your checkers. So there you are. You can see the difference between having a slight race advantage and having a five point board. And now here, if we kind of look at this position, now with white having one checker in the outfield on the left and two checkers on the seven and eight on the right. So on the left, it is right to make the running play because again of timing, but on the right, it's simply better to stay back. Um, if we move one of the checkers on the right, eight to seven, then interestingly, it becomes borderline. So the pip difference is significant um, in, these, in these positions, whether you're seven pips ahead or three or four pips ahead can swing the decision. But certainly thinking about what's likely to happen over the subsequent few rolls is important. Do you go now or you know, do you risk kind of not going and then end up in a worse situation where you give your opponent more hits, you crunch your front position and so forth. So timing is really key. So that's just some quick advice really on running to run off the, the 20 point anchor. So hopefully, you know, those comparisons have given you kind of something to think about in terms of timing, in terms of the race, in terms of competing board strengths, in terms of weak and vulnerable front positions. Put all this together and you have something to work with. And of course, you can always go on XG and move things around and experiment and see what happens. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out my other videos. Um, there's videos with guests also, such as Art Benjamin, Ron Ribello, Zenek Ziska, Dirk Scheman, Will Snellings. Loads of great people have come on my channel that I'm very grateful for. So please uh, check them out and I hope you uh, improve your game. Wish you all the best. See you next Wednesday. Bye-bye.